Alright, so we're back again with another room on Trahack Me. It's called Server Side Request Forgery or SSRF The Room. So this is a room where we'll learn to exploit the server side request forgery, also known as SSRF, a vulnerabilities, allowing you to access internal server resources, right? So the very first task is what is this? So we're gonna read about the room. What is that? It stands for server side request forgery. It has vulnerability that allows a malicious user to cause the web server to make an additional or edited HTTP request to the resource of the attacker's choosing, right? The types of uh, SSRF, two types. The first one is regular one, where data is returned to the attacker's screen, the set, which is the nice one. <laughs> the second one is a blind one, vulnerability where the SSRF occurs, but no information is returned to the attacker's screen. Okay, so that's very good. So um, that also works uh, the same with SQL injection blind, because then you have to time stuff and rely on on, 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 on return time, dependent on some time and so on. So it's probably going to take some time to master that. The impact is access to unauthorized areas, access to customer and organizational data, ability to scale to internal networks, reveal authentication tokens and credentials, you know, all kind of different things that we like and love to do. So what does SSR stand for? Well, I'm just gonna copy paste the answer, boom. And I also got the dot, so it's fine. As opposed to regular SSR, what is the other type? Well, it's called the blind one. So let me just type blind, I guess that would be the answer. Great. Let's close it down and go to the example now. So we're gonna view the page and the very first one here is gonna say, click the view side button and what is the flag from the SSRF example side? There's a hint and the hint tells us to append X at the end to ignore the rest of the URL. So let's go ahead and do a next button here. And it tells us about an expected request, something like that. The hacker requests the website like that. The website requests this and website returns user data to the hacker and API server returns user data to the website instead of, of the stock information. So, okay. And another one is like that, you know, where the hacker requests something and website requests that and, <clears throat> and number four step is then, you know, this is step by step. You can do that yourself, of course. And example, we have X equal to something, and it basically some, some it, this reminds me of idle vulnerability right now, because <clears throat> you got some insecure uh, indirect object reference. Let me just get to the actual part. So I wanna, I want to exploit something. Now I've got the server API. You can be learn chai, changing the address in the browser below to brute force the website to return data from the HTTP server. Website flag nine uh, to make things easier. The server requesting at, bar at the bottom of the mock browser return URL requesting. So it says API and I'm pretty sure we cannot just do that, right? You have to click something, nope. Um, so we need to do something to this and in order to do that we need to you know figure out what's right there and, <clears throat> and we can see that it, it kind of server requesting the the website it does say the number right there you know four dot website so well, what if we wrote something like server then it would be returning server website tmh and then <clears throat> What about if I wrote flag? No, that's not gonna work. So it's gonna be server. And then it says ID item two. So what if I did something like, let's see, instead of that, I said nine and the ID itself, <clears throat> could I just write flag? No, I could not. <clears throat> what was that? Nope. 
gonna find another way to make the uh, flag appear. Now it did it did tell us to do something by include the x variables or something, and by doing that we we do actually get a you know direct timeout in some way. So what if I what if I did an id equal to nine? What if I called that flag instead? You know, and we can still not get it to to give us what we want. So what we need to do now is to go ahead and, and look at the the result it's gonna give us. You know, it does say from below the bottom that whatever we do put there, you know, as the overall variable, I need to put the number two there as the original. It does say the server website, blah, 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 equal this and that. But what if I, I for example, put a dot and write server website dot TM try hack me just like that. Um, then you will see that it's beginning to alter the the URL in a way that makes me think that if I can interact with it there and then put the rest of what's behind in the variable because we're just juggling with some data. So what if I do that and then say slash flag? And basically just write what's up there, you know, I'm not doing anything in particular. Nine equals to nine, and then say and whatever equal, it doesn't really matter, you know, I could do what? And I could do X, I could do hula bula, <laughs> seriously wouldn't matter. So the, the thing here is that there is some variable, some way, some programmer that created something that take this variable here, and you can replace it somewhere and I, I have no idea how they coded it but I, I basically what I do is I just you know I can see here we know that what I write is serve website image flag equal nine and then I say rest of it it's in a variable and whatever is inside the variable doesn't really matter because the website is gonna read the variable and and that's gonna be it really so we have the flag take it finding the uh, Server side request for potential revenges. You know, the talk about it can be spotted in, in application in many ways. Um, there was an example here. You know, they show that you can either like that. You know, you can put something in and, and and see whatever is you know put there, depending on how this is evaluated on the back end and the server how its server evaluates this. It will be. Um, interpreted in, in different ways you know just saying that the input type is hidden and the name is server and the value is equal that doesn't mean anything you know, it's just some letters but if the server does something to those letters in some way and, and process it it could actually result in something pretty bad what website can be used to catch HTTP requests from a server um, did they mean requestbin.com uh, not that I'm a huge user of that yes so defeating common service side request for your defense well there's a deny list of course you can go ahead and do that uh, you can also go ahead and make an allow list open redirect and so on so we're gonna go ahead and try and answer some of these questions now the very first question would be, what method can be used to bypass strict rules? All right. So by answering that, you need to read the text. And if you casually just briefly read the text, you'll notice the one called stringent rules right there. It is ohm redirect. That's going to be the answer. What IP address may contain sensitive data in the cloud environment? Well, in this particular case, you need to scroll up and look for some IP address. And when you talk about cloud, they're gonna mention this IP there, and that's gonna be your answer for this question. Now, the learning of this is, of course, not doing what I just do by putting in the answers, because you need to read the text as well. But this is, this is the way, you know, one way of doing it. Read the text, understand what it says, and give your answer. What type of list uh, used to uh, permit only certain inputs? Now that is an allow list, right? 
So you're gonna go ahead and read the text and you know take the answer of allow lists and put that in. And of course, the next question would probably say deny list because it reverses it instead of permitting to stopping. So you need to think opposite, go ahead and copy paste the deny list. So now you got the theory correct. And that's really right. Uh, can I include this? It's gonna be filling up all the way screen. The last one is gonna be the, the practical, let's start the machine. Um, and and basically, uh, let's put together we learn about cross-site uh, server side request forgery. In a fictional scenario, wow. <laughs> we come across two new additional endpoints during the content discovery. Uh, excise against the ACMA IT support website. It's gonna be the furious one. The first one is private. <clears throat> it gives us, give us an error message explaining that the content cannot be viewed from the IP address. The second is a new version of the customer account page. Customer new account page, right, with a new feature allowing customers to choose an avatar for their account. Wow, I see. Begin, to, begin by clicking the start machine and launch it and go to this URL, fine, okay. And then follow the below instructions to get the flag. First create a, a, what is called the, the customer account, sign in. Once you signed in, why blah, blah, blah. To view the new avatar selection figure by viewing the page source of the avatar form, you'll see the avatar form field value contains the path to the image. The background image style can confirm this is the above div element, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we see some code right there. You know, it looks like, I don't know, background image, UL, I don't know, you know, very standard, but let's continue. If you choose one of the avatars and click update avatar button, you'll see the form change and above it display the current selected avatar. Okay. <laughs> Viewing the page source will allow us will what? Will show the current avatar in displayed using the URI scheme. And the image content is basic to form coded as per the screenshot below. Okay. So they they do base faces for encoded text to image, right? Now let's try to make the request again by changing the avatar value to private in hopes that the server will access the resource and get past the IP address block to do it firstly. Right click one of the buttons and inspect. That's a lot of stuff here, right? To do, but it's fine, it's gonna be easy. Be sure to select the avatar you edited and then click the update avatar button. Unfortunately, it looks like the web application has the nihilist list in place. And let's block to the private endpoint. Okay. So, as you can see from the error message, the path cannot start with private, but don't worry. So you got to go up a sleeve. To bypass the rule, we can use the dictionary traversal trick to reach our desired endpoint. Try setting the avatar value to x dot dot slash private. And uh, I want to say, you'll see we have now bypassed the rule and the user updated the avatar. The trick works because when the web server retrieves the requests, it knows the dot dot slash strings means to move up directory that now translates the request to just private, viewing the page source from avatar, and so on. So we're gonna go retrieve the flag. You know, I think we're gonna go ahead and just start this. Uh, so now we read it. Gonna open the two pages. Uh, we have the first one, horrible page. Uh, we're gonna take the next one. I'm gonna create an account called Vina with <laughs> the password one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. Uh, didn't I say create? Sign up. Oh, go. Uh, Daniel. Okay, and then Dan. It. Test. DK and then some password five six and one two three four five six. Let's get this bad boy. Your account. Um. So now we need to do something. And uh, what was that? Uh, first create one once you signed in to view your avatar. 
custom a new account. Can I see? Oh, there we have it. Your account didn't work. I don't know why it didn't work. Oh, it's it's new account page. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot that thing. So we can update the avatar, and the avatar is updated, and. Now we need to inspect the element and alter it to x dot dot slash private. Pick this one right there. Oh, what about inspecting? This time, it w yeah, I can see it now. So let's, uh, okay. So we do have it right there. You know, it's uh, it's it's quite uh, literal right there. So next, let's go ahead and pick one, and then put in that as I told us to do. And it just seems like that, you know, there's a lot of nothing going on. We could take this string right there, you know, and go to CyberChef. And then just put it in if it's going to work. It's going to load, I mean. Put it in and see from base sixty four, and then we we got the flag, you know, and we can put it in. So I'm not sure how well this room demonstrated the server side request forgery. I would say that I'm sitting with a feeling that it didn't do it that well, but you know, you just have to, you just have to basically, yeah, well, what you can say, I, I didn't really get any result from it. This is, this is what I mean. It, it's just a really easy one to do. It wasn't the most fun one. I would definitely say uh, something that involves us a bit more with flags and, you know, real initial footholds on the server and shells or information leakage or something would be a bad idea because sometimes getting a flag is just but eh, what could that be useful so all right so you're gonna line have a really nice day